Bills and welcome to episode 14 of Crash Course to Norwegian Black Metal since the 90s. This time the topic is One Hit Wonders. Um, oh, by the way, in case you're celebrating, happy holidays, happy Yule, happy Merry Christmas, whatever you're celebrating. But for Rauta Department, Rauta Channel, there is no exception, whatever the day is. Obviously, I'm not filming on this, the Christmas Eve or whatever you want to call it, but a couple of days before... Because now the listening process for these bands is done and it's time to just me talk about it a little bit. The bands in questions, band in, bands in question, how hard it is to talk really, are Thorns, Vedbu and Zende, and you guessed it right. Did you? Quist! That is something that people were actually uh, commenting in the last video, like, okay, you need to mention that. But... As it is with the series, and you might already know, I've started with the bigger ones and slowly we drip down to the smaller ones. Now, there's many, many ways to compile this list. Sometimes you go by activity, sometimes in chronological order and all that stuff. Like, for example, I've been reading this uh, black metal book, Evolution of the Cult, or the extended version. And why I'm mentioning is this, that it gives a little bit of insight uh, to some of the details which I'm going to mention here, and also some new information which I wasn't aware of. But my focus is more on the music side of things rather than to true history. I mean, sometimes we overlap with that stuff. But I'm also mentioning it because where this book goes more in the chronological order, not focusing on Norway alone, but lots of pages are, of course, dedicated to Norwegian black metal, I go a little bit different sense, and this is fun because we actually complement one another. The book complements whatever I'm doing with this series of Rauta Channel in, uh, all together, all as a whole. And also I kind of have my input, which is not necessarily the same that you have on the book. That is why I'm mentioning is that Thorns were quite a lot early on in the book feature because the roots of the band actually go to the late 80s, which puts Thorns as one of the oldest Norwegian black metal bands, something that some people are, of course, aware of, but a lot of probably aren't, because Thorns only has one album out, and that is as late as 2001. But we'll get to that in a bit. So now that these bands are introduced and this um, disclaimer has been pointed out, it's time to talk about the band. It's time also to tune in for the Metal Archive sites for these given bands. Now, when it comes to the video and the order I'm presenting these bands and talking about their music, that of course goes in chronological order, because why not? So, where's the uh, most of the bands, as well as this episode, features bands that were more or less um, starting their engines um, somewhere along the early 90s. Thorns is one of the uh, exceptions to that rule. Much like Dark Throne and... Uh, Mayhem, of course. Um, Thorns actually started with a little bit different name, but nonetheless the same band, already in the 1980s. Mind you, that was barely before 1990s, 1990s came rolling in, but that was this Stigma Diabolicum, which later on changed the name to Thorns. Now, if you want to go drilling into that past, I strongly recommend you to read the black metal Evolution of the Cult book and the chapter about Thorns. It gives you a kind of quite a bit of uh, background information about how the bands got it started and what was the influence. But also I want to mention this uh, because, like you probably know, this is something that I assume that a lot of people know, but in case you're one of the maybe younger or less experienced black metal, you need to know what explains that even though Thorns was there like 1990 onwards and did all this early demos, 1991, 1992, it took so many years, like 10 years, before Thorns' album, the self-titled one, came out. And uh, Thorns versus Ember, the split where they feature each other, uh, came as late in 1999. Is that because, of course, Thorns' only real member, only original member, Snorri Ruh, uh, he was part of this Burzum slash Euronymous ordeal, where Varivikernes of Burzum murdered Euronymous. And because Norruch was uh, seen as a, a judged, uh, imprisoned as an accomplice to this murder, he wasn't part of taking the violence, but, you know, uh, serving the ride for the culprit here. 
and you know being as such seen as part of the murder here he was also imprisoned for many years and that of course put the whole thorn span in ice basically delaying uh, things a lot now even though some of the stuff started happening uh, like restarting the engines during the prison times that explains why there is so many years different after you know the demos and the real material and um, I've said this before but especially in my version discography video but when Vikern has murdered Euronymous I said it already that it wasn't only two bands Mayhem and Burzum Vikern has destroyed by you know murdering his ex-band member Euronymous uh, but he also destroyed Thorns. Burzum of course was destroyed because Vikern has went into prison and basically all the stuff that came after Philosophem wasn't exactly the same quality. Now of course with Mayhem, Euronym is being dead, the band kind of a, you know, um, cut into this big transition, you know, replacing some of the members and the style changed and all that stuff in major ways. I could say those bands were just in ruins, basically much like Nagasaki and Hiroshima after the World War II atom bombs were dropped. But Thorns also suffered in big ways because now this guy in prison and he could have been doing his stuff in both uh, Mayhem, where Snurre of Thorns were part of, making important riffs and all that stuff, compositions. But of course, Thorns were damaged because there were no other guys like, okay, you're going to into prison, let, let us continue. It's not like um, so many bands that you had like one member, like Ember at least had like three guys in prison, but the band still managed to go on because you know it wasn't like the whole band going on and of course the prison sentences were that long but thorns damaged badly and that resulted like almost 10 years of gap between the demo phase and the first album now of course in hindsight you might see like okay whatever i mean it's like it's still early on 2001 but compared to a lot of uh, these 1990s black metal bands coming from norway who already put out albums as early as 1992, 1993, 1995 and all, while well, Thorns were quite late to the game in that respect. And even more of a shame it is, considering what kind of a classic album Thorns self-titled one is. I've already featured in a classic review, because I think it's really, really one of the best ones coming ever from Norway. And it's such a shame that we had to wait for, say, 10 years for that, and never after that a new album came out. There are probably plenty of reasons for Snorre postponing or procrastinating with that, but be it as it may, uh, this one album alone is there enough to justify Thorn's praising, worship and all that stuff. Now, versus so many other bands which went into many different directions. I mean, we have the Emperor going symphonic black metal, Dark Throne going into raw end of black metal. Bersum basically single-handedly creating uh, this atmospheric black metal and of course as such inspiring suicidal black metal what have you and mayhem kind of like doing the middle path with their classic grim Norwegian black metal and then a bunch of bands going viking black like enslaved Helheim what have you but Thorns was different breed basically Thorns and Mysticum alone are the reasons why such um, instru industrial black metal I was about to say instrumental because you know uh, that was created by Thorns and Mysticum I mean of course Thorns were still as a demo band and Mysticum kind of a, um, took the torch and created the whole thing into album ver uh, version album length in that sense but Thorns in my opinion took the whole idea a step or two further than Mystic. Don't get me read me wrong, I really love Mystic and will be featured uh, in an, another episode of this series later on, but Thorns kind of a perfected the style with this album. I mean, it's very basic, like 8 tracks, 48 minutes, like kind of a classic in that sense, and the songs are ni neither too lengthy or too weird, but they're definitely unique. I mean, there's a lot of industrial, like machine-made feeling with these hisses and thumping noises and all kind of a machinery going on. I mean, sometimes you really have to go either purely industrial music or certain kind of dark ambient. Inade, for being a good example, what Thorns is doing. There's a lot of sounds like sounding like it's coming from some kind of a dead machine, 
uh, created to destroy the world or I don't know some kind of factory robotics and all that stuff and that is then combined with the very trademark like riffing what Thorns is doing or were doing then you have these great black metal vocals on top of that and kind of a near perfect production to suit it yeah it's kind of a clinical but that's kind of a point we're talking about industrial black metal to begin with all i'm saying it's a near perfect album in so many ways it's an absolute classic which is only putting more shame that thorns never date made more music in album length anyway and even though there are lots of uh, smaller releases out there most of it's not that easily available i have this one on cd and of course i can release into it on spotify but there is no easy way to listen to this kind of stuff that easily unless you have the original tapes or maybe you go for youtube to just check it out and all that stuff but that you know with uh, lots of ads and all that stuff isn't exactly the way i want to listen to music you know being stopped every few minutes for advertising and all that stuff but being said, Thorns really deserves all the praise there is, and that's why I'm making this lengthy piece about it. But I strongly, once again, re re recommend you to read about Thorns on the Black Metal book, because it kind of enlightens you with lots of details and what was going on, and explains the story. Now, just giving thumbs up, there will be another Thorns album eventually. Now, then it's time to stop at Kvist, which I remember for a long time thinking it was a Swedish black metal band. I don't know why, maybe because of the name, because if I remember right, Kvist means uh, like a branch of tree in Swedish. And for a long time, back in probably late 90s, I think it was, may, might have been a very early 2000s, but I'm saying something like 1989 or 1999, something like that, probably when I heard Kvist for the first time. And that was for, for Kunsten Ma, the Evik Vike uh, was already out there since 1996. Now, later on, I started to think about Quist like a side project, which it might have been. I don't know what the official status was because if they can look, look at the members list, past members so Trandr Nefas, who is mostly known for Urgehal but also a bunch of other bands. Now, the other lineup, current still, considering that band was announced 2022, being active again. All the other members either played in both Urd Verbeinelgskult, a doom band which never made that far, or Team Nagel, a black metal band that was there and later on became Endesima. Now the thing here is, whether Quist was a side project of these bands or whether these, pro these other bands were a side project of Quist remains kind of like questionable and it's hard to really justify it later on to say okay this band was first and blah 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 because these demos 1994 came roughly out at the same time like for, for example Urgehal is an uh, older band than Kvist but then again Kvist made fir first full album out before Urgehal so it doesn't really matter where way you go but what is interesting is that this album is considered a classic by many, and I kind of understand why. It's a very down to earth, kind of organic, kind of melodic, kind of atmospheric black metal. I would say roughly, but not exactly the same, not exactly like too similar to whatever Oliver was doing with Berk that. But there's this kind of a natural feeling to it versus being grim or super raw or inhuman, or for that matter, not really like something like symphonic or whatever. In my opinion, Quist's debut album shows a lot of potential what the band could have been if they only kept going on. Like, there was a promise of something bigger to happen, but I'm not a big fan of this debut album. I think it's pretty decent, like 7 out of 10, but I really don't see the praise it's getting from a lot of people. I mean, considering the time, 1996, yeah, surely it was... a kind of good quality and all that stuff but there were already a lot of bands and albums out before this making kind of a similar black metal but in my opinion way better quiz for instance isn't exactly good in production it's not bad or anything like that but it's kind of like a lukewarmish when it comes to songwriting they plant a bunch of good ideas but nothing ex out of ordinary another extraordinary in that sense i mean it's a pretty decent album and totally deserves giving a shot in case you missed it back in the days. But I think there is also a reason why it's often overlooked 
And when people say, yeah, it's underrated. No, it's not. I mean, it's the kind of a typical black metal release of its time. And while it gets this 1990s um, appreciation and all that stuff, it's nothing like you have missed big time. So remove the hype, trim it out, and then give uh, this album a chance. I mean, it's pretty good, but like I said, not something that you should be like, oh my goodness, I have missed the album for 25 years now. How come? And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's just one of those albums which is nice to have, but kind of too easy to forget also. Now, be that may, I doubt Chris will be ever making a proper comeback, even if it's still uh, present here, because, um, you know, Thrandernefas has been dead for many, many years, unfortunately, and while the other members are alive and all that stuff, it will be probably hard to make a comeback after like 25 years. So, be this may, we shall see how, see, see how it goes. But it's an interesting side note on the pages of Norwegian black metal history. Which leads us to the weirdest one of this one hit wonder um, episode, Ved Bones End. This is another band that got a lot of praising back in the days, and as you can see from these Metal Archive scores, much like um, Thorns here, average 93% uh, or reviews, uh, Quist 91, and Ready Blue and Send, this debut album, Written in Waters from 1995-92. All these are seen nowadays classics, for rather obvious reason. They were there ahead of their time, maybe at least in the terms of Ready Blue and Send and all, but in hindsight, it's kind of a hard to see their value as such if you're a new listener. I mean, for example, Rhythm Waters, that was something like an avant garde progressive black metal release back in the days. Of course it was making waves, of course it was different. There were clean vocals, weird riffs, compositions, like, why are you doing this, man? Like, this was basically um, doing much like Arcturus, but in different ways, preceding whatever Ulver decided to go do later on. And of course, you know, Radiant Waters as such marked a way like, hey, you can be black metal, having those raspy vocals, but more on, on the side of things, rather than just, you know, doing more clean vocals and ideas that could be something else coming from your black metal territory. Mind you, by 1995, black metal was still, yes, the second wave, we're talking about Norway still, was still quite young. And a lot of ideas were going in the, you know, people's head and all that stuff. So in that sense, 1995, considering most of the early albums came just like three, four years ahead of this. So this was something like a really fresh take. I never got to like it. It was too weird for me back in the days. It's still too weird for me nowadays. But in terms of creating this sub-genre known as Ament Card Black Metal, or Progressive Black Metal, if you will, yeah, it's totally a pioneer work, and as such, I can totally respect whatever the guys were doing. But it's not for me. And it's not like I want to slander the album here. I'm just going to point it out that whereas Quist is very, very safe to approach as a Black Metal fan, if you're listening Black Metal as, say, Black Metal, whatever you're expecting the second wave to be, um, Quist is a safe bet. Thorns is a little bit weird with its industrial stuff, but Bed Bones End is definitely something out of ordinary. It's like a um, space alien kind of a thing, you know, coming down with its spaceship and saying like, this is our version of black metal. And they're like, what the hell? This really ain't black metal. So whatever people are considering it to be like later era black metal, Avant Card or whatnot, or Dissonant and one like Dead Spell Omega or Blue Dow Snort or any of the Icelandic stuff. Yeah, Wet Boons then that was doing that stuff in 1995, which is very, very early on given what a lot of bands were doing. And of course, Arcturus, which I mentioned in the previous episode, was basically doing that kind of stuff. But these are different. I would say if Arcturus was the circus guys doing an Cardish take on black metal, kind of a carnivalistic, well, Wet Boons then was like, let's go progressive. What is even more interesting is that this band is filled with the, you know, kind of a star elements of Norwegian black metal. You have Skoll from Arcturus and Ulver, of course, also Fimble Winder, another uh, one-shot project which I will mention later on. So you have a talented bass player here of various bands, but you have also Aggressor from Ore Noir and uh, partially <laughs> other bands also. I mean, he has 
been part of many bands, also, you know, starting Sadurjagon back in the days. And uh, you have Vikotnik, who is mostly known for his work with Dudheim's card. So you had like three really talented guys. And mind you, these are still all from the 1994 when the band was founded. So they kind of never left the boat, so to say. You can see some of the past members here, but these are later on. So Vid Buenzende is an important part of Norwegian black metal history, despite you like it or not. So it's very, very interesting. I mean, they did something else. I've seen them live. They're not my cup of tea. But like I said, I have big respect for them doing something different. And as such, I was supposed to do an interview with them already this year. Uh, that is Steelfest 2023, where they were supposed to play, but something tragic happened and the band was postponed. Let's hope that I get to talk to these guys next year, 2024, because this is something interesting and it's only some genius kind of minds who get to create something as different as this one. It's a bold move, but it's not for everybody. That's kind of a given. Now, if you're looking for uh, approaching these projects, you have to have your mind set in different moods. Like I said, Xist is the safe bet, Thorns is the industrial one, and you have to probably adjust your mind for a little bit. And for Red Bull and Sende, grab a cup of coffee or tea, or maybe a beer or whiskey, sit back and expect the unexpected, and then you're good to go. Now, it's good time to expand your knowledge, it's good to expect, uh, expand your uh, listening pleasures, and of course, I hope you like of these recommendations, even though I'm only fan of one of these three bands featured here. But this is just my opinion, and don't take my opinion for worth of shit. What matters is that you make your own opinion and you find these bands. And of course, if you like these albums, you can find, for example, Wet Bones and a Demo as re-release on streaming services as well. And for Quist, you might have to be do a little bit more digging as well as for Thorns, because most of the material here aren't available in streaming services or physical copies, such like that. But seek and you will find, and off you go and enjoy. Next episode, I will feature something else, more cult bands, so stay tuned and have a great holidays, whatever you're celebrating. Take care.